Will President Tinobu sleep this night? Question mark. Now to the news inform. That things are hard in Nigeria is no longer news under the Bola Ahmed Tinobu's 18 month old presidency. What could be new is the news of softening up the hardship that Nigerians are subjected to as a result of situations that should have been frontally confronted decades ago. Reflecting on the Structural Adjustment Program, SAP, of the military administration of General Ibrahim Babagida, yes, Nigerians always have reason to suspect the International Monetary Fund, IMF, for making their lives unbearable, akin to the proverbial Esau's hands on Jacobs. However, the IMF have distanced itself from President Bola Hamed Tinobu's first subsidy removal. It says it was Tinobu's decision. Addressing the press conference at the 2024 20, annual meeting of the IMF World Bank in Washington, D.C., the IMF Director of Africa Region, Abebe Selassie, emphasized that the decision to remove four subsidies was a domestic one made by the Nigerian government. We don't have programs in Nigeria. Our role is limited to regular dialogue, as we have with other nations like Japan or the UK, Selassie stated. Interestingly, Selassie acknowledged that the government choices regarding subsidy removal reflect its long-term strategy for sustainable economic growth. It also recognized the significant social costs involved and suggested that the government can mitigate this by expanding social protection for the most vulnerable citizens affected by the impact of subsidy removal. It is led to President Tinobu's steps to take to mitigate the effects of his decision on the vulnerable groups of the societal structure. They are not doing anything now. They are leaving us to suffer. They are not mitigating anything. They are happy with the fair subsidy removal and they are happy with the fact that Nigerians are suffering. They don't care. The IMF clarification has made it crystal clear that the bulk of economic decisions stops on the table of President Bola Hamed Tinobu. How then did we get here in 18 months of the presidency of Bola Hamed Tinobu? Yet, to sit in any meeting with the IMF, World Bank, or any international financial institutions, Tinobu hadn't even sat at his table as a president when he took his first decision to remove petrol subsidy during his swearing-in ceremony. What an audacious presidential order, subsidy gone, and all hell was let loose. Was the president driven by dregs of the wine of power at his swearing in ground or the ambition to succeed and turn Nigeria into the dreams of many decades on his way to the presidential office? The challenge of this article is to help the president consider Abadou economy as a panacea to ameliorate the suffering of his fellow citizens. Prior to the clarification by the IMF, the voice of the World Bank was heard right on our soil on the hardship being experienced daily by citizens and not in Onyi Ogi across the sea. Show me the way. Only those among the Yoruba language speaking populace who were old enough to experience SAP will understand my drifts of a humor. The World Bank spoke in unmistakable terms. Nigeria still have at least 15 more years to travel in the tunnel before they can see the lights from the ongoing reforms. Do we have to travel that long? In traveling this route, are there things to do to caution the effect of the hardship? On the masses. The answer to this will come after we have examined the reaction of the World Bank to an homegrown economic philosophy, Abado Economy. At the 30th anniversary of the Nigeria Economy Summit Group, NESG, in that mid scale, the chief economist of the World Bank stood in for the World Bank president, Ajay Banga, to participate in the discussion. What the NESG and the World Bank chief economists fail to realize is that stories about reforms wouldn't make sense to a nation whose democracy has been built on prebendal indulgences, aka stomach infrastructure, by the political elite. With empty stomach, the aspiration has hit an unprecedented level. The World Bank spokesman started out with greeting, due observance of protocol, and the apologies of his boss, Ajay Banga. VP Shesima was seated, including Honorable Minister Bagudu and Wale Edo, amongst other government officials and political elites. The guest said, Nigeria is an important country at a critical crossroad. I would rather be here than anywhere else. I was asked to speak about the most pressing challenges affecting Nigeria and Africa's economic development and growth. Note that the subject matter of discussion is crystal clear 
the most pressing challenges affecting Nigeria and Africa's economic development and growth. I'm going to focus on Nigeria for a simple reason. Africa grows as Nigeria grows. Given its size and significance, the success of Nigeria reforms will give a big boost to countries across the continent because the whole world has a stake in Africa's future. The whole world needs to pay attention to what Nigeria is trying to do. The World Bank chief economist was impeccable with his words. As we gather here, there is suffering in all sections of Nigerian society, but especially amongst the poor and the young. They want good school and colleges of affordable healthcare, care, decent jobs and safe conditions which allows them to make full use of their potential. I believe that is just what we want. Are we asking for too much? No, we are not. High inflation is hurting everyone, but it is hurting the poorest people the most. Oil wealth that ought to be used for the welfare of all Nigeria has for too long been used to benefit the elite. The elites are also being hurt by the reforms that started last year, but they did well in the past and they are buffers. Ordinary Nigerians are being hurt more by the reforms. They were also hurt by the policies of the past and they have no buffers. Their welfare should be up uppermost in our minds, Abi. You should care about your citizens and not yourself and not your pocket alone because I don't understand why you are happy that your citizens are suffering. The position of IMF and World Bank officials about the economy in Nigeria provides a fertile ground for the president to look at his homegrown Abado economy as a bailout framework and a way to arrest hunger and poverty while waiting on the long-term results expected from the ongoing reforms. Structural adjustment program SAP should take a redefinition in the context of our situation. I will take each word of SAP for conceptualizing a way forward. Adjustment this requires a paradigm shift to financing rather than the decade long and ongoing funding of the administration of government and productivity of labor. It is imperative to, for the nation to make the advocated shift in our public expenditures rather than the customary exercise of cash funding of government administration and productivity of labor, of labor. The envisioned adjustment process should be our first step toward financing practices to evolve productivity and activate wealth creation. This will create a virtual circle of prosperity for citizens rather than a vicious circle of poverty associated with the jaded cash funding exercise. Sustainable process of economic growth and development to deliver job opportunities to citizens for livelihood in pursuit of happiness in lifespan this should be our focus as we travel in the suggested 15-year period in a turn aka okay, reform gestation period. The president must not fail to understand that the short-term success of Abadou economy in its synergy with its long-term economic reforms will determine its fate in 2027. The masses are too hungry to care about tomorrow if provision is not made for them today. The elite class, if they still exist, are entirely political with the majority in the opposition. How well? The price the national economy over their being in power is very well known to the president. Will Mr. President sleep well tonight without taking a look at the Abado economy? Of course, he's going to sleep well, Abi. He's going to sleep well, though. No, sir, he goes, says, this same president stood against the removal of false subsidy. In the past, you stood against it in the past, and you, you came in, you removed it, and now Nigerians are suffering. It is well. My listeners, over to you. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to like, to share, and subscribe. Thank you for listening. See you some other time. Bye.